Hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your health and fitness, body and mindset from where you are right now to where it is that you want to be. And today's topic is about creating momentum. We're heading into the last week of January 2021. It's gone by so quickly, I don't know about how you feel, but every year I find that January almost passes by like you've just snapped your fingers. We are so busy. We are also in a time of rest for a period of days or weeks for some people, and we can lose that perhaps fast-paced momentum that we had at the end of the year because we're trying to get so much done. We're trying to catch up with so many people. We're trying to meet deadlines, reach our goals, do all those things up to whether it was 2020 and the uniqueness of COVID in 2020 and continuing into 2021, but whether it was that uniqueness that made it different from any other year. But every year is a little bit different, but every year is also incredibly busy. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like taking um, big breaks at the end of the year because you can lose that momentum. You can lose that sense of achievement and drive that you had and it can take a while to get back into that. And I think when it comes to your health and fitness, this is a big problem for people. People fall off the wagon or don't even get on the wagon, to be honest, but they can fall off the wagon at the end of the year into the first part of the year and you just get caught up with all these different things that you forget about what's perhaps really important in terms of your health. You don't really set any goals for yourself and because of the impact of COVID last year, people are just more likely to uh, perhaps party for longer, party harder, just not be as focused as they otherwise would want to be. Now, depending on which side of the world you want, here in Australia where it's summer, people want to you know, get, get in better shape because you know, they're taking off more layers, they're showing more skin, they want to look good. If you're over the other side of the world, then maybe that's a reason to be covered up a little bit more. People can't see what it is that you've been doing. You're more covered up. So maybe you're less likely to be motivated or hungry to make a change. So I've got sort of four steps that I like to work through uh, for myself and talk through with my coaching clients about how do we create the momentum? How do we get started? How do we keep it moving forward? So if you go back about three weeks um, to an episode that I called The Naked Truth, go back and have a listen to that and you'll get a really good understanding as what I'm talking about to start from the very, very beginning. And when you're right at the very start, you don't necessarily know what it is that you need to do. But if you go back to that episode, I'll walk you through and just go through subsequent days after that. And I'll hold your hand all the way through the process. But let's just say that now you've got a little bit of momentum. We want to keep it going. So in order to be able to do that, the very first thing that I say you need to do, you've got to be hungry for change. You just have to be because if you don't have an appetite, if you're not hungry to change where you are right now and get to a different place, guess what? You're going to stay exactly where you are. Now, this is the biggest problem for people. They feel like they want to change, but they're not hungry enough. And if you're not hungry enough, you're going to go and hunt for the food. No, you're not. Are you going to be coachable? Are you going to seek out coaches? Are you going to do what's required? Are you going to get up early? Are you going to... You know, go for that walk when it's cold or hot or whatever it is. You're going to eat, avoid eating that food that you know you probably shouldn't when it's right in front of you. The answer is no, you won't because you're not hungry enough for the change. So you've got to get hungry for the change. And then what you need to do is say, well, what does that change look like for you? What do you want? If change for you is a completely different lifestyle, So I'm coaching a few clients at the moment. They're a couple. And one of their challenges is that they say is having takeaway less than three times a week is a massive barrier for them. Now, I would look at that and say, are you kidding me? Like there is no way that I would have takeaway three times a week. I don't even have it once a week. I mean, that's in my, where my mindset is, 
that's just, it's just not an option. It's like, that's not a barrier for me at all. But everybody's different and their perception is their reality. So what I've said to them is, okay, well, let's not cut it out. And I said, what are the issues for you? Why do you have takeaway three times a week? And it's, it's evening time. And um, let's just walk through this example. They have it three times a week. I said, why do you have it? Well, it's meal time uh, at night time. And I said, so why do you have it? Because we're tired. Uh, you know, one of them stays at home, one of them works, one of them's got chronic fatigue, he can't, you know, he doesn't have the energy to cook it at night time, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, okay, so how do you think we get around that? Don't know. I said, okay, why don't we try this? Let's cut down to one day a week. I said, which day of the week are you the most tired? And they agreed that it would be Friday. I said, okay. So I said, let's plan this. Step one. Friday is takeaway night. Now make sure that you've got a number of healthy or healthier options for takeaway that you can pick from. And then you won't feel so guilty about it because they always beat themselves up afterwards. I said, okay, so have a list of what those options are for you. Then I said, on those other nights when you have it, um, I said to the, um, the husband who stays at home and I said, okay, when do you have the most energy? And guess what he said? Oh, well, it depends. Some days, uh, you know, it can be the whole day and I just have to sleep all day and blah, blah, blah uh, because of the chronic fatigue. And I said, look, I said, I hear what you're saying, but I said, I think there are some times in life where we just say, I'm tired, so therefore I'm not going to do anything. But I said, I truly believe that I said, I've never suffered from chronic fatigue. I've been tired before plenty of times, but I've never suffered from what you have suffered from and I can't relate to it 100%. But I said, sometimes you've just got to suck it up and push through even though you're tired. So I said, what I want you to be doing is finding those pockets of time through your day. Maybe it's the morning. Maybe it's the afternoon. I get that by late evening or mid-evening, you could be quite tired. So that's probably not a great time to be cooking. So let's do it at a different time in the day where you have the energy to do it. So again, just a simple example of how you can crush through or push through some barriers that you put in place because of your perception of getting around those things can be too hard. So um, I saw them after a week of doing that and I just saw them today actually and they were able to do it. They only had takeaway last week They've lost weight this week. They're feeling good. They need to lose about, oh gosh, I think it's about 70 kilos, something like that between the two of them. And so it's a bit of a journey. But unless they have a hunger for change, they're never going to change. They're going to go back to the three days a week of takeaway or maybe more. They're going to find excuses for not being prepared and all that kind of stuff. So You've got to be hungry for it. You've got to know what the change is that you need to make. That was just a really simple example that I use. The change is that they want to transform their bodies. They want to get to a stage where they're in healthier positions to maybe have their own kids. Um, they want to feel confident. They want to feel energized. He's obviously got some issues around chronic fatigue. He wants to be able to get a better handle of that, have more energy and just enjoy life more. The thing about that is, and this is the third thing that I get people to, to consider, is these things have to excite you. Now, I can get excited about stuff for people, but it's not me. It's not my life. But if I'm chronically fatigued or if I realise that there's a big health benefit for me in losing 40 kilos, then that's exciting. You know, I get excited about packing on five kilos of muscle this year. I mean, that excites me because I know the hard work I put in. I know how powerful it is to be able to change your body. I know the work, the discipline that is required uh, to do that. I love the fact that I'm focused and I'm driven to be able to achieve change. And the fact that you can change your own body, this is why I got started in doing what I do now in the first place because you can save money, you can um, you know, talk to people and have an influence on, on uh, their mindset and that, and that type of thing, which is what I'm doing for you right here. 
But to be able to change someone's body, to be able to do things where you have full control to be able to change your body and how you're feeling, fueling yourself with the right food, doing exercises, then feeding your body the right way so that you can get a response and change the way that you look, change the way that your muscles look, change how far you can walk or run or swim or ride a bike or row a boat or whatever it is because you're fitter. To be able to condition yourself to do those things, wow, does life get any better than that? You can change your body. And this is what I realized many years ago because I'm a shorter guy. I thought, well, I can't get taller, but I can get bigger. I can get bigger muscles. I can feel better about my body and the way that I look. So you've got to get excited about this. And then from there, it's really about just starting to plan and take action. Because you can't just think about all these things. You've got to start planning. So for this year, for instance, I, this started for me a little while ago. So at the end of last year, so I achieved what I wanted to achieve by the 19th of November last year. But my main, one of my main goals was to obviously change my body, get the six pack, but I'd entered this challenge and I wanted to become a finalist in that challenge. Now, I didn't know the date that they were going to announce whether I made it or not. And so that left me in limbo. And so is it, is it difficult to get excited when you don't necessarily know, you know, did, did I make it, did I not make it? And, it, and you could say well, two views and say, well, yeah, that would be tough. Or you could say, well, just reset some new goals and go for it anyway. And if that shows up uh, that you've made it, then fantastic. If you haven't, well, nothing's changed. Well, that sounds good in theory, but it played on my mind. And for four weeks, I didn't even know when they were going to announce it. And about four weeks out, I found out that they were going to announce it in another four weeks' time. And I thought, okay. So in that time, I was still eating well. I was still training and doing all that. I was still quite focused. I'd set some new goals for myself for the new year. But I wasn't in a place where I thought, okay, so when do I start? You know, when do I start hitting it for this next year? Um, My purpose immediately after the challenge was to take some time away to have a break because of COVID, my business and how hard I pushed my body and everything. I just wanted to take a little bit of a break. So I eased up on some of the food and the eating and everything. Um, It was certainly not crazy. I didn't have the takeaway. I think I might've had one takeaway meal uh, over the past 10 weeks now. Um, So it's still very focused. And then I found out on the 16th of January, so only like two weeks ago really, that I didn't make it. And what did that do? It got to the stage where I just thought, just tell me one way or the other because I'm ready now to move forward uh, in what I want to do. So I found out that I didn't make it and then bang, just like that. I was like, right, that's done. That has excited me about what's to come this year. So then I thought, "Mm, if I make it, am I going to be more fired up to work harder or not? Well, who will know because I didn't make it. But one thing I do know is that because I didn't, I was like, okay, so I'm going to work hard this year to achieve the gains that I'm looking for, four to five kilos. And I then set about saying, okay, well, what does that look like? Where am I going to add the muscle, you know, on the different parts of my body? What's the plan that I need? So I started talking to my coach as I was talking about yesterday's, um, in yesterday's um, episode talking about exactly what it is that I want to be doing. And then as each one of these things goes forward, it got me more excited. I had the DEXA scan just a few days ago, and that got me excited as well about, okay, well, this is where I am. My coach says, yeah, look, the result that you've got, it's really just a side effect of um, all the hard work that you did last year, how hard you pushed yourself, and your body's just responding in a way that says, I need to recover now. And so we've set a very clear path. So this is about the planning part. He gave me, my coach, he gave me a challenge of writing uh, my program for the next six weeks, which I've done. I've sent it to him. I'm waiting for him to sign off on that. Um, That got me excited. So it got me thinking differently. It got me thinking about not my last program, but this program. What are the exercises that I can really use to stack on some muscle? We talked about creatine cycling, which is something when you want to build some serious muscle that you need to be doing. And um, I was um, learning all about the program that I need to put in place to be able to do that during this program. 
and my coach is confident that I should put on about five kilos of muscle over the next two programs, which um, our programs go in 12 week cycles. So in other words, in 24 weeks, so about half a year, he feels that I should be able to put on five kilos of muscle. How will we know? Measured by the DEXA scan. So again, it pr- and he thinks um, dropping a few kilos of uh, fat as well. Um, and he says to get to my single digit body fat percentage by doing these things, he said he doesn't think it'll be a problem. Um, so what does all that mean? That's exciting because there's a plan and I've taken the action. And as I speak to you here today, I'm getting quite excited, even more excited each day that passes about starting again and setting that date. When am I going to start? So it's 1 February for me. Uh, so today's the 26th of January. I start in uh, another six days time. That's exciting. That's exciting because I'm ready. And I think if I had have just started a few weeks after I'd finished the last challenge and I hadn't have known my results and all of those other things, I wouldn't be as excited. And if I didn't have the DEXA scan, I would have just assumed I was in a different place and I would have approached it differently. And this time I feel more confident that I'm going to be better rested. It's a more structured plan and we should get a much better outcome. So is that exciting? Absolutely. So this is what you need to do. Yes, you're different. I'm an athlete. You may not be an athlete. That's fine. It's about creating that change that you want being so hungry for it that you can't stop, that you're so excited each day that you get up, that you can't wait to start working on what it is that you want to change. You've got to be clear about what it looks like. Get excited. Get excited about this because you've got one shot at life. And if changing your health, changing your body excites you, then you're with me. If you don't get excited about that, I would say, maybe it's time to reflect a little bit more deeply inward so that you can get excited about optimizing your health, improving your health, getting that better body, getting that uh, more energy into your body, getting more focused on your health and body. I mean, that should be your number one focus because we only have that one shot in life. And you know, don't you want to be around for as long as you possibly can to enjoy all the beautiful gifts that we have to share with people, your kids, your family, your partner, friends, all of those things, all the people that you wanna have an impact on in your life. That's what life's about. So let's put it as our number one priority and then start planning and taking the action now. But I guarantee you this, unless you're hungry, unless you get excited about this, you will never change. So if you can't get hungry right now, If you're not hungry and you're not excited, then you need to start doing things differently to get into that space. And for me, what I needed to do was just back off my training a little bit, still go in and do it because it's an important part of my mental health and I've conditioned myself over over three decades now that I need to do it. It's just such an important part of me that just... Taking time out rejuvenates me. Reading rejuvenates me. Maybe watching some inspirational movies. I've watched a number of inspirational movies over the last six weeks uh, that have just, I suppose, triggered a certain part of me. Gone to that part of my brain. Gone gone to that part of my mind. Gone to that part of my, my heart that has got me emotional about changing. Isn't that exciting? But I have to work at creating momentum just like everybody else. As focused as I was last year, as great as the results that I got, yes, I could have done better. And yes, you could automatically think, well, if you're as focused that last year, this year you'll be just as focused again. But it doesn't just happen like that because of the way our minds work. And I'm just as human as you. It's just that I work hard on staying focused And I have to rejuvenate myself as well, re-energize myself, create that passion on an ongoing basis. We have to work at it. We have to practice it. And that's what I've been doing over the last eight weeks. 
to be able to get to the position where I know, yes, come six days time, I'm gonna hit this and I'm gonna be excited about it even more than I am right now because I can see how the program builds, their building blocks to what it is that I wanna achieve. So it's super exciting. Now, if you wanna have a further discussion with me about this and get some more information, then reach out to me. Go to the mentaltoughnessandbodyshow.com, reach in for a free, consulta- free consultation and let's start a conversation. Stay safe wherever you are in the world. Keep smiling, stay hungry. See you tomorrow.